Rwanda's miraculous feats and resilience has seen the country grow from ashes to now being a household name. Now this could be explained in many, many reasons, but in this edition of Doing Business in Rwanda, we take a look at the role played by arts and media towards Rwanda's reconciliation efforts. I am Naringwa Fiona Mutoni. It was the tool. Uh, Rwanda is an oral society and uh, every home at least had a radio. We didn't have a, like lots of TV stations, but every home had a radio, um, a radio receiver I mean. And um, it was very, very easy for various people to start sharing hate messages. We've heard about people like Wichindi, we've heard about many other people who created even music. Uh, to be shared on the same radio stations. So media played the biggest role um, in encouraging people to kill over the years, but also they used the creative ways, music, um, art, they did painting, they did uh, cartoons, even in newspapers, um, they did poems, they did all sorts of things that made people feel like it's okay to kill someone. One thing, I was not even here in 1994, but when I came back later, around 98, I made some research of what was happening before. So they, there was, uh, what was really common here was like radio drama. And uh, this was, I think, what people are very hooked much into. But what really astonished me was the power of art to kill or to save. And at that point, a lot of artists were creating music that was inciting killings. So there was a lot of very beautiful music that if you don't understand what the words are, you can dance to it in a discotheque. But basically the music was like, kill them. They are cockroaches. The lyrics were inciting killings. But of course there are some Asian, there are some musicians that created really music like, uh, like uh, Spiriane Rugamba who created music. He was like a prophet, but again that music, um, he was killed because of that music. He was like a prophet of peace. He would like dream, he was like the Martin Luther at that, at that time through music. He would, there's a song of his I like that uh, I dreamt the children of Rwanda were playing. I dreamt the children of Rwanda were singing and playing on the hills. I mean, that was so beautiful. But the reason he was dreaming that is because the kids at that time were not going through that. <laughs> Music um, is a very powerful tool. When it's used positively, it can play a very good role in the society. So in the case of Rwanda, I have heard and read that um, some of the artists have really used their talent very badly to, like, to sensitize the very bad politics that were there. Um, you know, some artists just sang the hateful songs. She has played a role of killing people psychologically and physically. 25 years later, Rwanda has over 35 radios, 14 TV stations, 50 print outlets and 80 web-based outlets. Now what has been done to transform the media from the role it played back in 1994 of inciting hatred to now it being at the center of reconciliation? plays its role as a partner, mm. not uh, as an opponent to the government. Mm. And uh, the professionalism is growing, is growing uh, at uh, almost 75%. Uh, percent. And it uh, gives us uh, a good, uh, if I can say, uh, picture and uh, hope for uh, our future, right. or for the media industry. And I am very, very convinced that uh, the media will not be instrumentalized as it was um, before. Right. A good uh, leadership mm -hmm. that put in place uh, a good policy and uh, new laws and uh, support the initiative of uh, establishing uh, schools of journalism within the University of Rwanda 
and this conducive environment helped the media industry to rebuild itself. Right. And of course, we had uh, media reforms. Uh, let's give uh, an example of uh, the 2012 media reforms mm. that help us to have a media which is self-regulating, professional, free, and responsible. So now we are very uh, happy for the future of our media industry, right. mm. and they are ready to work. And what we need is uh, to work together, to stay together, and uh, to be more accountable mm. as a journalist and uh, as media industry. Art has, most of the time, been categorized as a form of entertainment. What role has it played in the healing, reconciliation and unifying of Rwanda? It, it was not easy. It was not easy because even up to today people think art is just for entertainment's sake. But art is uh, a great tool for healing. Art is good for therapy. Art is good for change. Art is good for... Art takes us to a place that nothing else can take us to. It takes us to a place where we reflect and go through that journey of introspection, whereby even if you lie alone on your bed and you listen to music, that music can take you to a place and you start reflecting upon anything that is bothering you inside. <laughs> I think uh, finding a vessel to express yourself is very, very important uh, because if you just keep these kinds of emotions inside you and not let it out in a safe kind of environment, then it becomes toxic. So dance for me is the one place where I feel like I can let go without compromising my dignity and who I am. I can say that music started rebuilding the country and now for our generation we also used the music to put people together first of all because I don't see music as, a, as an instrument of only the message but it's also a, a tool of happiness uh, when i turned nine that was like three years after genocide i just sat down and uh, asked myself a lot of questions you know as kids we have other kids that we used to play together we used to be in the neighborhood together but we couldn't see them again so i was wondering will i see them again will i sing and play with them anymore would they really come back then from those lots of questions, a song just came into my heart. So um, I could say that uh, our history was the first uh, inspiration to me. And I could say that it's, it was the reason that I started now having my own songs. The impact we've had is that we've, we've developed our own homegrown methodology because our story is our story. And our, the story I found in Rwanda, I never even learned the art I would use in Rwanda while I was in Uganda at the university. We are doing more fiction stuff and Greek theater, but coming back here, you start making research-based work, and the impact is that at least we have art forms that can help communities engage in certain conversations that can help them develop. And even if it's just the law that has been put out there and the community is not getting it, you can use art to make them understand it. It is also uh, playing a very big role into reconciliating people. The music that are being sung these days, the pieces we are creating, other people are creating, and poems. A lot of young people are more into poems, writing stuff and everything. And it's a very powerful way to express what words can't say. You know, people don't necessarily have a conversation and say, you know, this is what my life looks like. But most of the people would find time to write a small thing or relate to a music that was written by somebody or attend a performance that is being done by somebody. And realizing that it's not just them living a kind of life they're living. And so making sure that they connect with people and come back together. It's crazy how you come here thinking you're just going to do a play, you're just going to play a part. 
but every time you play a character, a piece of that character stays with you. The story, the song, even if it's a dance move, there's always something that, is, that sticks with you. Like, and you learn something so much, much more than you expected. You think you're just playing a character, but you learn a lot more about them and about yourself. So it's, it's actually more powerful than we think. Despite the efforts by the government, how can the youth take up the responsibility to share their story through the different tools like media and the art platforms? There is no better time for Africa than this time. Reason being, our story has been told by very many other people other than our own story, us the owners of the story. Um, what can the youth do? One, first learn how to create good content. Um, but there is a lot of wrong content out there. And it's up to us to say, all right, I know this is good. How can I utilize it and you know, share it with someone else? So um, what they can do, one, learn how to do very good things. Because you can create anything. Anyone creates content on social media. Now it's our time to start and say, all right, let's start making short videos. Let's start writing. Let's start tweeting. But whatever we're going to tweet, it's going to be something that um, is worthy of people who are going to, you know, to read it, who are going to listen, other than just creating content for the sake of creating content. I think art is a unique way to get people interested in that. So I think plays like this would get the interest of the youth a lot more than putting it in a book or a museum, something that would actually distance them from that. But yeah, I think though as you grow older, you do have an urge to seek for the truth more. So eventually you do find yourself at that place. That's the good part. Question. But I think the content we would focus on would, would be one based on spreading love and a safe space for conversation and acceptance of whatever each person has to share. Because usually social media is such a damaging environment. Usually people are so pokey pokey. So we should learn to create a safe space, but also I think spread love in everything that we're doing. Cause uh, in not only the Rwandan genocide, but like even like the Holocaust, they were spreading a lot of hate speech with media, even the Rwandan genocide against the Tutsi. So, uh, uh, and it's a safe space that spread love, that spreads love. That's where we leave it on today's edition of Doing Business in Rwanda, where we understand the role that art and media play in Rwanda's reconciliation. Now, if you have any feedback, you can write us an email at dbir at abn360.com or you can write to us on Twitter at dbir Rwanda or at CNBC Africa or myself at Fi Muthoni. Thank you for watching. I am Naringwa Fiona Muthoni.